Create and Learn Scratch Tutorial for Kids. Today, we're gonna learn how to make a Flappy Bird in Scratch. We'll show you how to control the bird with the space key, build moving pillars, and update the score every time the bird flies through them. First, before we get started, let me introduce myself. My name is Sarah. I'm a teacher at Create and Learn. I'm also an illustrator, graphic designer, and I am a former art teacher. So let's get going. The first thing we want to do is pick a character. We recommend choosing one that has two costumes. So it looks like the sprite will move across the screen. So something that has some sort of movement. We chose the parrot. We want to make sure the parrot is small enough to fly through the pillars. So set the size of the sprite in the lower right corner to 30. Now we're going to code the flappy motion for the parrot. So click on the parrot icon in the lower right corner to make sure you're adding blocks in the correct location. Start with the when green flag clicked block from events. Then get forever block from control since we want the flappy motion as long as the game is going. Inside forever, place the if then else block from control. The flappy motion is controlled by the spacebar. Each time the user hits the spacebar, the bird goes up. We want the condition for the if statement to be the sensing block when space pressed. If this is the case, we want the bird to go up. We can use the change y by motion block and set the number to 20. We also want the bird to look like it is flying. So after we change Y, we want to use switch costume to parrot B looks block. The else condition indicates what happens if we do not press the space bar. Then the parrot should start to fall a bit. To do this, underneath the else part of the block, we need the change Y by negative five motion block. We still want to make it look like the parrot is flying, so we want to use the switch costume to parrot A, looks block, to alternate costumes. Our next step is to make the pillars for the parrot to fly through. We will do this by making a custom sprite. Hover over the circle in the bottom right corner for adding a sprite and select the option, it's there from the top, that looks like a paintbrush. Let's use the rectangle icon from the last option in the first row to draw a pillar sprite. See how we place two long vertical rectangles and two short horizontal rectangles to make our pillars. Let's also make a new custom background that indicates the end of the game. Similar to how we created a custom sprite, hover over the circle in the bottom right corner for adding a background and select the option, third from the top, that looks like a paintbrush. Use the text option in the second column to display a message to the user that the game has ended. Like you lose. Now we'll code for ending the game if the bird touches the pillars. Click on the pillar sprite so we can add some code for it. The first thing we want to do is stop the game if the pillar touches the parrot. We start with a when green flag click block from events. Underneath that, we add a forever block from control. We always want to check if the parrot has collided with the pillar we put an if then block from control inside forever. The condition for the if then statement is the sensing block touching parrot. Make sure you change the drop down choice if needed to reflect that the pillars in your sprite are touching. When this happens, we want to use the looks block, switch backdrop to backdrop two to indicate that the game has ended and use the control block stop all. Let's go back to the parrot code and make some changes based on our new backdrop. We want to add another events block. When backdrop switches to backdrop two, then we want to attach the hide looks block since we don't want anything displayed once the game has ended. Between the one green flag click and forever blocks we added before, we need a bit more code. First, we want the show looks block, which makes sure we have the parrot at the start of each game. Then we want another looks block. Switch backdrop to backdrop one. This will remove the backdrop at the end of the game. Afterwards, we want the go to XY motion block. This will set the starting location of the parrot. The specific coordinates are not important, but make sure this parrot starts on the left side of the screen and somewhere in the middle vertically. We set X to negative 190 and Y to 30. 
The remaining code is for adding additional features to the pillars. So click on that sprite to add more blocks there. Just like with the parrot, we want the pillars to disappear when the game ends. We can do this with the same blocks, when backdrop switches to backdrop two, and hide. We also want to show the pillars when the game starts. So place the show looks block between the when green flag clicked and forever blocks we added before. Our next task is to get the pillars to move across the screen. Since we started with the pillars on the right side, we will make them move left. Let's get a when green flag clicked block from events and a forever block from control. We want the pillars to move as long as the game is still going. Inside forever, we want to go to XY motion block. This will set the original position of our pillars. To set the blocks on the right side, we set X to 180 and Y to 28. Afterwards, we need a motion block to execute the movement. Choose glide to XY. We set the time to 2.5 seconds, but feel free to play around with this number. The X value needs to be on the far left. Once the pillars reach this point, they will loop back around to the right. We set X to negative 280. Since our pillars are only moving horizontally, we don't want the Y value to change at all. To ensure this is the case, we can drag the Y position motion block into the Y space. The final step is to keep track of the score. Go to the variables tab, click make a variable and name it score. Get a when green flag click events block since we'll need to keep track of the score as soon as the game starts. The first variables block we want is set score to zero. This will reset the score at the start of each game. You may need to adjust the drop down option to ensure that it is score. Then get the two control blocks forever and put if then inside it. The condition for the if statement is when the parrot has flown through the pillars. The parrot only moves vertically and not horizontally. So we know the parrot will have flown through if the pillars move past the parrot's location. In the if condition, we can detect that by using the greater than operators block. The left space will be the X position block for motion. And then on the right, we put negative 190. This will check when the pillars have moved past the parrot's X location. Inside the if then statement, we want the change score by one variables block. We want to increase the score every time the parrot makes it through. Right after, we also want the wait one second control block to make sure the score only updates once every time the parrot flies through. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed building your Flappy Bird and I hope you have fun playing your new game. Feel free to customize your game with different characters and play around with backgrounds and themes. Also, you can check out our Scratch Coding for Kids to learn how to build other cool games. I hope to see you soon. Bye.